Hey guys, welcome to the channel, uh, The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andres Salazar. Super excited today. This is going to be a treat. Today we're going to talk about Windsor McKay, Little Nemo. And we're going to talk about, this is some of the best art you're going to see. And this is over 100 years old. This is so brilliant. But as you clicked on the tile, you're thinking, is he racist? Is, is Windsor McKay racist? Are there racist imagery in here? Are these offensive? Should we not look at this? Should we somehow ban him? Um, and let's just chat about that just for a moment before we get into the art. This, this book here is published by uh, Fanographics. There's been numerous printings of his work uh, that were originally... Um, published in Hearst, Hearst uh, published them in his newspapers. Um, just They've been published many, many times in many languages. He is considered one of the fathers of not only comics, but also animation. Before Fletcher and Disney and those guys, Windsor McKay was doing some amazing animation uh, and drawing. But let's talk about racism for a second. Um, you know, this is all my personal opinion about racist imagery and things like that and you see there's an African boy here that's got the kind of the classic vaudeville mammy you know uh, lips um, the white around the lips the kind of uh, almost like a primate monkey kind of drawing of a African person um, you can't do that now you can't just draw, I couldn't make a comic book in my book, Shangri-La Estates, I can't just have a black character and have him drawn like that. Unless there's a reason for it, right? Unless I'm trying to push some buttons, I'm trying to make a statement about this uh, imagery. He wasn't making a statement about this imagery, that's the way it was. Remember, he was born in, right after the Civil War. He was born in 19... Either 1968 or 1971, a little bit of confusion on that date. This was in 1910. This is, um, so for me, it's about context. It's about the world. And for me, I don't like to put categories of people and say, oh, they're this because our standards today is different than their standards then. And vice versa is true right? There would be people today in our society that would be considered hedonistic, you know, uh, unnatural, you know, people, right? Because of their actions. And so it goes both ways. If we're going to, we can't judge, in my opinion, you know, the work, the person, uh, today's standards um, for when they lived. Because that was not in the consciousness, that was not, there either was not that understanding, right, that we have today, or there was just a different set of values, you know. Um, people don't believe in the Bible now, people back then did, so though, you know, so there's just certain kind of things you have to put in context. So for me, I'm not going to say he's racist. Um, is this a racist image, though? Are these racist stereotypes? I guess that's for all of us to kind of decide. Either we decide collectively and we say, okay, we as a group denounce these drawings and we don't want to see those drawings, right? Uh, which I'm actually worried, I, I'm nervous about that because I don't necessarily like the idea of the group think, you know, uh, or do individually determine on our own determination what we decide for us is offensive or not offensive or racist or not racist. Uh, but then that then becomes the conflict of, well, my definition is different than your definition. And so then we conflict. Um, similar to the kind of moral relativism that we have where uh, my morality is not your morality, so I can't judge you by yours, you can't judge me by mine. And so um, it gets complicated. And so I don't really have an answer. So if this video, you're coming to this video like, hey, he's going to talk about racism. There's no, I don't, there's no real answer. For me, it's not. But I'm also not black. If I was black, maybe this would give me a, that, that really gut 
feeling, that horrible feeling that sometimes we get, if, if I were to see that, perhaps that would be the case. Um, either way, let's look at this and try to separate um, the... Let's just try to separate out the man, the art, and look at the, the, the drafting and look at the, the, the amazing work that this is and what can we learn from this, right? And uh, let's do that right now. So let's turn the camera over and let's take a look at, to me, one of the epic comics made, especially, you know, back in the day, Windsor McKay's Little Nemo. Let's do it right now. Okay, guys, let's do this. Uh, excited again about sharing with you the art in this book. Uh, one of the one of the the uh, challenges of doing uh, these these collections is that the originals were not maintained. You got to remember, this was back when a lot of stuff were just thrown away. There was it was not seen as something to be treasured necessarily and keep, and so it's really hard for these publishers to to get good um, plates made of this artwork. So it's a challenge. It has been done again, like I said many times. This might not even be the best, you know, copy of it, but um, it is one of them, and it's one that I bought. So. Uh, this is volume four. There's this is the only one I have. There are many volumes. I think it. I don't know how far it goes up, but he did this for many years. Um, so let's just look at the first freaking page, you guys, and and look. So right in the very top corner, we have our offensive imagery. We have this kind of Aboriginal, you know, character. We have this guy here, which I'm not sure if we can astute him as African or or what, but he's got something going on. <laughs> I mean, now the originals of these by the way were huge. They were they were at least 13 by 19, but I think they were much bigger. Maybe even 18 by 24. Someone in the comments correct me, uh, but they're massive and there is a guy who has printed them in that massive form. They're very expensive as you can imagine, but I really want one of those volumes because you can really look at the size that he's working in. But even in this very big page, which which is a pretty pretty good size, uh, you still can see some, but it would be great to see it all. Just look at his colors and perspective. Remember, 1910, 110 years ago, this guy was making these comics. And if you look at it, it is incredible. Um, just the, just these figures alone, Right, the perspective of these figures, the way they fold out, the way they're moving. And look at this beautiful, you know, it's just a linear one point perspective. It's all going over here to this vanishing line, but it's done so clean and so well. And there's just so much creativity and imagination and detail that's going on, right? He's moving here. We see this other perspective of this beautiful like palace. Then the wind comes. And look how they move, so realistic. And then now they're wet. And look at this effect. I mean, look at this, you guys. This is incredible. Windsor McKay drew this stuff. I don't know what tool he used. I mean, definitely brush, but probably some kind of a, a crow quill, you know, um, pen. Just amazing drawings. Just amazing work. Um, you know, now this character, uh, I don't believe was necessarily, you know, uh, dumb or did, did bad things or, you know, wasn't like a thief or a stole stuff or nothing like that. But it's just the drawing of it, right? Is kind of like, whoa, we don't draw like that no more. We don't want that, um, you know, as part of our, you know, iconography for, for characters, um, but, you know, it's not hideous. I, mean, I don't know. It's hard to say because there's kind of a cuteness to it, right? And, you know, back in the day, they had these little dolls and mammy dolls and all these things. And, and there was a, a different feeling about them. And 
to some, they could have been considered um, kind of attractive or kind of cute in some way. I'm not going there. I'm just saying, you know, back in the day. Okay, that's all. Got to be careful here. I don't want to get blasted. Uh, look at this beautiful, like really cool dra drafting. This is really neat. And notice this hatching here. Really nice. Really clean. I mean, he's using a ruler probably for all this. Get nice in there. This really cool design of this vehicle. This airship thing. This the imagination is really good. Now they've used this, uh, you know, uh, Little Nemo has been done a couple of different times, different creators. This is public domain now. And so, you know, um, uh, I want to say Dark Horse, but it, I think it was... Was it Top Shelf or Dark or Boom? One of those companies did something with Eric Shanoir and um, um, Eric Shanoir and the guy who did um, Gabriel, the guy who did Luck and Key. Who is that? Gabriel somebody. Let me look on the shelf. Uh, Rodriguez. They did some uh, Little Little Nemo uh, stories and. Um, it turned out pretty good, but this stuff is like classic. This is great. I bet Mobius saw this. I mean, everyone saw this. This wasn't just something that like, people knew this. This was so popular. And cartoonists looked at this and studied this. I mean, look at this, great, great stuff here. Again, the hatching, right? The Brooklyn Bridge, the, um, Statue of Liberty, Capitol Building, Washington's Monument, the Obelisk. It's just really cool. And just look at the great hatching in here and the cross hatching. It's really kind of fun. The really neat atmosphere, you know, it brings to it. Really, really cool. Again, he does such a great job of bringing these characters in this three-dimensional space. By the way, they're all these little short stories, I should mention. They're all little, little like, stories where at the end, he wakes up, right? He dreams, and he wakes up from these dreams. And so the gimmick is he has this fun little whimsical, crazy story because it's a newspaper. And then at the end, oh, he wakes up. And in the end, he, he falls out of bed or he whatever. So that's they're just one-page little stories. And uh, I don't know if he had like a full week to do each or what. But um, gosh, if he did more than one in a week, I don't know, man. This guy is pretty epic. Just the way this is done. Really great drawing. And the costuming is wonderful. You know, here's that character. I can't remember his name. Um, I should know it. Just really cool. I love the costumes. I love the perspective. The colors are so fun. I love the watercolor feel. These are great flowers. Look at this. It's really interesting. He was really able to kind of let loose and really explore things. and But yet, there's also needs to be a gag at the end. So you can't just do some weird esoteric abstract story you got to come up with a bit of a plot and then some sort of a resolution or a conflict that then boom he wakes up to um which is not easy it's extremely difficult to do pages like that you know one page at a time these are great faces this is great stuff man i love the way he draws the outlines of the characters and he just puts just enough detail and information for these costumes for us to understand what's going on and the coloring helps of course just and i love this what wonderful ideas here i mean i need to really study this more and more and i haven't went through this in a while it's been it's been a good amount of time since i've looked at this looking at it again with you guys is just a real treat it really is i mean look at this stuff look at so much is happening the way he's able to draw the figures, put these figures here, all the stuff going on. And these beautiful, really cool physical gags, right? 
making them work. Yeah. Just brilliant. This stuff cannot be canceled, cannot be, you know, denied. This this is really great work that is foundational to comics. I mean, this guy knew wonderful techniques. And people looked at it and learned from him. And the clothing, the fabric, I mean, the folds, everything he's doing here is just fascinating. And so we have to take all this in and say, you know what, yeah, there's this character. And yeah, he's not what we would say is cool now. Um, but we can't throw away everything because of that. And we've got to somehow take this, learn from it, you know, reject what doesn't fit our own paradigm right now. Because guess what? It's going to change. <laughs> you know, we change as a society, as a whole, our opinions and feelings about certain groups or certain things will change. And when they change, we either change with them or we don't. But we make that decision. This is really cool. Look at these really neat, interesting creatures. All the hairs on this elephant, so cool. Really neat, probably really fun to draw, I can imagine. Yeah, look, the clothes, they're, they're like flat, so they're like billowing in the wind. Isn't that neat? Just the way they're able to do that, you know? To, that's not easy to do, to draw things, you know, in that way. So cool, okay. Should we go? Through, should we keep going? I just want to keep going with you guys, but I don't know if you're getting bored or not. But here's some Indians. People say Native American now, but you can also call them Indians. I know, I know Native Americans who say, "Call me an Indian. We're Indian." So you never know. You gotta, um, you gotta like be in contact with people to know what they want more than just what people say they want you to say. Very cool. He did animation. He left Hearst. He went uh, back to another publisher. I think there was some dispute over money. And he did animation. And he did some amazing work. Uh, one about a dinosaur. I can't remember the name of it right now and a couple others, and it's fascinating the way he just was able to draw. It's This is just so good, and just to think about all the work he did, day in and day out to do these things. It is just, just really freaking good, man. Just the level of creativity. Uh, I think that's it for the channel, though, this video. I really appreciate you guys being with me. Make sure to uh, let me know what you think of uh, Windsor McKay of this book. Um, I'll try to put a link to see if I can find this somewhere that you can get this copy or another one of his books because um, it's definitely something to, to read and study and have fun with. Look at this. Isn't that great? Love these buildings, dude. Love this skyscrape stuff. It's so good. It's just wonderful. He's not, I mean, he's using reference, but he's not drawing this. I mean, he's drawing this, rather. Look at that. Oh, man, it's so good. So cool. Okay. Oh, what's here? What's this going? Hang on. We're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. <laughs> we're keep going. Look at this. Wow. So much work goes into that. My goodness. Now, this is interesting. This different coloring. This is really cool. Yeah, look at this. This is really neat. Oh, wow. Look at this this greenish one yeah I'm feeling these probably made his life a lot easier and in a way it's because it's stripped down a little bit more it might uh, not overwhelm you so much with all the color it might allow you to kind of take it in a bit more you know this actually looks different some of these the inking or something is a little different Maybe just, yeah, wonderful stuff, wonderful. 
Thank you very much for watching, guys. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.